Hello and welcome to another TLDR News EU video. While all eyes are on a number of different things, ranging from the coronavirus to the US presidential election and the end of the transition period, something has slipped under the radar. A French porn ban. The French Parliament unanimously agreed to introduce a nationwide age verification system for pornographic websites. And if you're getting a bit of deja vu, you'd be right. The exact same thing was attempted in the UK recently too. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's happened, what the proposals are, and whether they've learned from the failure of the British system. Now, we know all too well from our video on the UK system that YouTube doesn't like videos about porn. That video has nearly 2 million views, but didn't make us very much money at all. Turns out advertisers don't like advertising against porn, or at least not many do. Anyway, if you'd like to support our independence and help us make more videos on topics that we think are important, advertiser friendly or not, then consider backing us on Patreon. In return for your donation, you could get one of a whole bunch of perks, and you can find out more by clicking the link in the description. So, first things first, what exactly has happened? Well, on the 10th of July, the French Parliament passed a new law requiring age verification on pornographic websites in an attempt to prevent access by children under the age of 18. This all happened after French President Emmanuel Macron back in January at a UNESCO celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child backed the idea, saying, We do not take a 13-year-old boy to a sex shop. Not anything goes in the digital world. We will clarify in the penal code that the simple fact of declaring one's age online is not a strong enough protection against access to pornography by minors. At the same time, French internet providers, tech companies and the adult film industry all signed up to a voluntary charter, with Le Figaro reporting that the parties undertook each in their areas of competence to offer at least one free tool or to implement integrated solutions intended to protect minors from any exposure to pornographic content, with platforms being given six months to put their measures in place. In June, the Senate then formally introduced an amendment requiring the creation of an age verification mechanism, subsequently approved by the French Parliament. This whole effort seems pretty reasonable. I'm not sure anyone's fighting for children to be able to view adult content. That's not something that most people want. However, like so many other attempts at online censorship, in reality, this might not work quite as intended. So it's important to look at the system that the French government are proposing and how effective it might be. Importantly, unlike the UK system, where exact methods for age verification were defined by the government, notably the use of credit card verification or in-store purchase of so-called porn passes, the French system is significantly looser. Although lawmakers have recommended the use of credit card verification, the exact verification system of choice has been left up to the platform. Rather, the French media regulator has had its arsenal bolstered with new powers and sanctions to audit companies, with sanctions up to and including blocking access to the websites in the French Republic, with a court order available to the regulator. Specifically, if the website doesn't comply with the preliminary warning from the regulator within 15 days, the regulator will be able to ask the Paris Court of Justice to send an order to the telecommunications providers to completely block access to these sites within French territory. According to Politico, senators have also suggested using France Connect, a government tool which is similar to the UK's Gov.UK Verify. The system is currently used for tax collection and other public services, meaning that if this was used for age verification, you'd be creating an implicit link between one's national government profile and one's online habits. Given the potential uproar that such a situation would cause, it was very quickly shot down by the French Secretary of State for the Digital Sector, who in a speech said, I want to clarify things for everyone. There is no question of using France Connect to check the age of internet users who connect to pornographic sites. So, with all of this confusion, it's not exactly been the best start. Which leads us to wonder, is the French proposal any better than the one that failed in Britain? Well, not really. 
The largest stumbling block to the British proposal, and the main driver behind the reason why it was dropped, relates to privacy. Any age verification system, no matter what form, ultimately requires people to link their physical self to their online self. This link between people's online and physical identities has raised concerns time and time again. Be it using credit card information, driving license details or passport numbers, the system won't be logless. Rather than have your browsing history simply linked to your device, your browser and maybe even your Google account could become linked inextricably to you, the living, breathing person watching. Critics talking at the progression of the UK system, such as Jim Killock, executive director of the Open Rights Group, have repeatedly stressed that the lack of proper privacy standards is dangerous and irresponsible. Having some age verification that is good and other systems that are bad is unfair and a scammer's paradise of the government's own making. Data leaks could be disastrous and that would be the government's own fault. A report by the Oxford Internet Institute at the Oxford University on effective age verification techniques, drawing upon the online gambling industry, shines a light very clearly on the issue at hand. The costs associated with this may be very great for an individual if either they're accessing highly personal and sensitive services or content such as pornography, or if they have given up more personal information than might strictly be required by law which will then be used for other purposes, such as marketing or advertising, at a later date. Your sexual preferences are unquestionably sensitive, and hence there is greater and greater incentive for you to circumvent the protections, specifically by using virtual private networks. While this new law will apply to all traffic originating in France, using a VPN, you can tunnel your connection to another country, heck, even to the UK, and watch whatever you wanted to your heart's content, unimpeded by French law. With the youth population ever more born into a society of tech, ever more capable on computers, something as simple as installing a VPN will literally be child's play. This is the point where we really wish we took NordVPN up on that offer of a brand deal. Then again comes the issue of remit. Like the UK proposal, the French system seems to have a quite gigantic loophole, notably when it comes to Twitter and Reddit, which both have massive amounts of online content. Using a court order to shut down either would be excessive to say the least, and likely cause more uproar, but letting them be undermines the whole point of the law. And yet again, there are the unintended side effects. Outright banning certain content may create a culture of censorship and internet suppression, invariably pushing people into deeper, darker and more dangerous parts of the web, be it more niche, darker content or worse still, the deep web. The words that we said in our UK video a year or so ago continue to ring true here. We absolutely need to have a conversation about how to protect children from unsuitable content. We need to work harder to ensure that our young people get sex education from the right places and not learn from porn. We need to make discussing topics like this less taboo so that we can have a real dialogue with young people. The question is if putting bans on online media like this is a valid way to solve this issue. On one hand, there's the unequivocal justification of protecting children from unrealistic and potentially extremely damaging content. On the other hand is the role of the state and the importance of individual privacy. The next few months and years under this new law will be an immense juggling act and who knows if the system will gather enough public support or simply fade away like it did in the UK. Regardless, three of the core problems that the UK government reached are likely to arise for the French once again. The plan won't be effective. In the modern world, it's incredibly easy for anyone to get around basic censorship like this, with cheap and accessible tools like VPNs. It creates a huge data risk. Associating your identity with your online traffic is always going to be potentially dangerous. And it could easily be a step towards broader online censorship, where governments regulate more and more of what happens online. Unfortunately, just because the cause sounds noble, protecting children, doesn't mean that it's always going to be possible or reasonable to achieve. 
you always have to balance the benefits against the potential wider social and democratic issues that come alongside regulation and censorship. Issues that become difficult very, very quickly. What do you think though? Is there a workable age verification system that's even theoretically possible? Or are the drawbacks always going to be just too great? And should the government even be getting involved in issues like this? Or is it best left to individuals and to their parents? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, you can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. Be sure to subscribe to TLDR EU for all of the latest updates and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post. You can also find more from us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. Special thanks to our Patreon backers whose support makes videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of videos, be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.